Hello and welcome to the Bond Street Shopping Guided Tour. This is part one of the 5km West End Shopping Photo Run. Now we're going to be starting on Bond Street itself. So let's give you some information about Bond Street and the route. There is not a street called Bond Street. There's New Bond Street and Old Bond Street. But Bond Street Station is in fact on Oxford Street. And we turn right going east until we get to Debenhams. And then we go down Bond Street itself. And it's a straight road which will bring you all the way down to Piccadilly. And there are a lot of other areas around the route that are worth exploring. This will take you to Grosvenor Square and Claridge's. There's Maddox Street area which has got a number of galleries. There is a route off towards Mayfair and Berkeley Square which has got a lot of designer shops and on this side we have Savile Row and then we have Dover Street and Shepherd's Market down to our left and obviously on the other side of the road there is St James's going down towards the palace. Now in terms of shops on the western side there are as you can see quite a number of high value shops on this side of the road as well as on the other side where we can see that there is an equal number of luxury shops that can take your focus, but also art galleries and hotels and a few restaurants. And if you wanted to move away from the street to explore, there is Claridge's, there's a handle museum, there's the Royal Academy, as well as when we get to the bottom end, we've got the Ritz, as well as the Burlington Arcade. If we look at Bond Street, it has its own particular story to tell historically. If we go back a number of years, we've just had the English Civil War, where Charles I was beheaded, and his son, Charles II, the king who brought back partying, had come back into London. Now, during the time when Oliver Cromwell was in power, it was a very no-fun Puritan lifestyle, that was enforced upon the country. But when Charles II came back, he and the country put all that aside and then started to show how they could enjoy themselves. There was also the issue of the Great Fire of London in 1666, which meant that the whole of the city of London was destroyed, or at least 70% of it was, and therefore they had to build a new centre in a different location. And that was really some of the start of the build-up in this particular part of London. Now the proximity to St James's Palace was quite important and Charles II gave this area of land to the Earl of Clarendon who built Clarendon House. Now Clarendon House would have just been on the left of this line in, as you can see in 1725 but the Earl of Clarendon ended up in disgrace because he was blamed for the Dutch invasion of the Medway. And the house was eventually sold to the Duke of Albemarle, who then sold it on to Thomas Bond, Henry German and Margaret Strafford. And what they did is they demolished the Clarendon House and then built a number of different streets and buildings all in this particular area. And the names of the streets in this area are named after these people. Now the first part of the development of Old Bond Street was just really up to the ends of where Clarendon House was. Then Conduit Street which is down in here. Now it was called Conduit Street because this was a conduit which brought water to the City of London. It needed to be developed and after that point it was able to develop a little bit further and then from this point onwards it took about till about 1720 to complete the development all the way up to Oxford Street at the top. Now the way the street was built was quite interesting. It had shops at the bottom and areas for residents at the top. But most importantly, it had something which was quite unusual in streets at the time, pavements, which meant that people could walk along and do their shopping without getting the muck from the road. In the 18th century, it was certainly the place to be seen and there was something called the Bond Street loungers who were very distinct in something which is called the Bond Street roll which is a very distinctive 
way of walking, which, which I'd love someone to be able to show me what that looked like. It was for the rich and fashionable, and the shops were set up to suit their needs. Now, one of the influences on fashion at the time was Mary Antoinette, who was the wife of Louis the Sixteenth at the time of the French Revolution. She had a way of dressing, which she called combating their enemy with style. Now, although it didn't particularly work for her, she eventually had her head placed under the guillotine, it did influence the way that people used to use fashion in society. Now, to get back to the people who used to live in Bond Street, it was very fashionable. You had Pitt the Elder, who was a politician, Jonathan Swift, a writer, you had Lord Nelson, who was an admiral, and then you also had Emma Hamilton, who was his mistress. Now, although some of the other shops in Oxford Street and Regent Street were built to a bigger design so that people would walk around with inside the, the shops in a great interior space, Bond Street has always remained having small and discreet shops, which gives it its own characteristic today. And as you can see from the map of 1851, it remains very much as it looks today in terms of the overall appearance of the, the buildings. Now, Bond Street is split into two halves. Old Bond Street starts from Piccadilly up until Grafton Street, which is about where, where Louis Vuitton is. New Bond Street started in 1720, so it's not really that new, and that goes all the way up to Oxford Street. I've got a couple of pictures. There's not many photographs of Bond Street, but this is one in about the early 1900s, and you can see... It's still quite wide, but you can see the pavements there and some of the look of the street is, hasn't changed a great deal since then. Obviously, the shops have. Now, let's have a look at the actual run itself. Now, there are three entrances to Bond Street. There's one where I'm located here. There's one, if we see the bluish building on our left, that's a new station entrance. But there's also another one just next to HMV. We're going to have to go make sure that we go east rather than west because west will take you all the way down to marble arch and that's where we're actually going to end up but this is going to be the start position which is right next to bond street station so we start the run at the other bond street station just further up where the blue building is and we head off in a easterly direction and what we're looking for is this building coming up on our right hand side which is debenhams and we are looking for the first turning on our right, which will take us into New Bond Street. And we just keep on coming down this, this road. We go past Bonhams, the As we auction continue ears. down past Brook Street. We pass Phoenix on our left and Victoria's Secrets on our right. A bit further down, we pass a number of auction houses. And then we get onto Moxham Street and Grosvenor Street, past some fine art galleries and other places for luxury shopping until we get to Conduit Street and Bruton Street and then we reach some of the high-end luxury shops such as Chanel, Louis Vuitton, then we come into Old Oxford Street past the statue of Churchill and Roosevelt and then we come into the jewellers of Cartier and Tiffany, we have Salvadori shoemakers past the Burlington Arcade and the Royal Arcade. Then we come to the bottom of Old Bond Street, past Todd's, Alistair McQueen, turn right into Piccadilly with St. James's on our left, the Woolsey restaurant on our left, and then we have the Ritz. We cross over the road there, go through the arches, and then turn left into Green Park. And then we end up finishing at the station. OK, so now we're going to have a look at some of the sites that you can see along the route. One of the ways I like to explore Bond Street is with the mindset of if I did have the means to buy the things in Bond Street, what would I do and where would I go and why? So here we are at Brook Street, the first 
shop we see is Fenix, which is on the junction of Brook Street, which goes left towards Oxford Street and then right towards Grosvenor Square. A department store is always good to get an idea about what is available and what the different styles are to give you a palette to which to go and do the rest of the shops. The next one is a Victoria's Secrets, a lingerie shop, which may be something for the evening. And then we get to Claridge's Hotel, which is just detour up Brook Street. And it's a great place if you wanted to either stay there for the night or have afternoon tea or a meal. Fantastic. Five star hotel. As we go a bit further down the street, we obviously hit some of the auction houses. So maybe you're thinking of what you may like to buy with inside the auction house. Or maybe have a look at some of the galleries that are next door. And there are an awful lot of galleries in this part of London, should you wish to buy some paintings for your home. As we move a bit further down the street, we get to the Halicon Galleries and Fine Art Society. So this is an area where there is a number of establishments to look at the finer tastes in life, as well as the finer price tags. Then we have a mixture of a Phillips Auction House again here, and we have Fendi's and Zilli's, one of which is for men and women's for different French and Italian styles. Then as we get a bit further down the street towards Conduit Street and Bruton Street, we are just at the junction of the Time Life buildings. And then we've got an option to look at the Henry Moore life screen, which is on the top of the building, or look at some of the other buildings, such as the other fabulous shops here, including Burberry. We've got Chanel, of course, and Dior. And then a bit further up, we have Louis Vuitton, just at the junction of New Bond Street and Old Bond Street. And then we see the Allied sculpture of the relationship between Churchill and Roosevelt next to the watch shop, should you need to get a watch for yourself. Then we get to Asprey's, which is a very British shop in terms of the items that it stocks and sells. Then we can get to Cartier on Bond Street to decide, well, what sort of jewellery would I like to buy it. Then we can look at the Ralph Lorraine, which is an American store. And then moving on, we've got Salvatore, which is very famous for shoes, as well as the Burlington Arcade, which was one of the first covered shopping areas in London. And if we want to move on a bit further, as we get down towards the end, we have Tiffany's again, uh, another fantastic jewellery in Bond Street. And then a number of fashion houses. We've got the Royal Arcade, as well as Gucci, an Italian house, as well as moving on to some British designer clothes such as Alistair McQueen and then Todd's again for shoes. And then we get into Piccadilly itself, turning right towards Hyde Park. And then one of the first things we see is Woolsey, which used to be Woolsey Car Showroom when it was first created, but now is a fantastic restaurant. And then we have the, the Ritz Hotel and the Ritz Club before finally finishing off at Green Park. Okay, so that's the end tour of Bond Street. I hope you found that an exciting and interesting tour.